Hello and welcome to the Parthenon. Today we're opening an exhibit called the Antikythera Mechanism. And it's the story of an amazing artifact uh, that was found at the turn of the 20th century uh, that ultimately proved to be one of the earliest calculators, in fact, the earliest calculator in human history. It was created uh, in about 150 BCE uh, and probably no one would have ever have known about it except it was at some point in about mm, 60 BCE. It was put on a ship with a whole bunch of other treasure that went out into the Mediterranean and sank and everything was lost until 1900 when a group of sponge divers were diving off the coast of Antikythera Island, which is just south of Greece, between Greece and the island of Crete, and they discovered there was treasure all over the floor of the sea. And they went back to Greece and contacted the archaeology museum in Athens, and they made a deal that they were going to uh, salvage all of this shipwreck treasure, and in that process they found this strange lumpen bronze piece that no one was quite sure what it was. It looked like it had a gear in it, uh, and they took it back to the museum. And it sat there for a number of years before anyone actually got around to looking at it. Ultimately, uh, the exhibit is the story of that piece, which is known today as the Antikythera Mechanism. It's an amazing artifact of technology. Uh, some people call it the world's first analog computer. It basically, the ancient Greeks had figured out how to use gears and the teeth in the gears and the number of teeth in the gears to calculate uh, basically the orbits of the five known planets at the time. And the uh, mechanism also did other things. It, it predicted eclipses. Uh, it also even predicted or would tell you uh, when the Olympic Games were happening in ancient times, among a lot of other things. But the story really starts uh, with these guys who found the mechanism in 1901, and this is their, the sponge divers in their boat. Uh, and they used basically diving gear such as this uh, to go down about 60 meters. And in fact, the first man that discovered the shipwreck was wearing a suit like this. And he actually came back up to the surface and said that basically there were dead bodies all over the surface of the seafloor. It wasn't really true. Uh, ultimately, it was going to prove to be a lot of these statues that they found. But ultimately, the mechanism uh, was recovered and made its way to the National Archaeology Museum in Athens, Greece. And these are some of the pieces of the art that was also recovered with it. Uh, no one really thought about the mechanism much until a few years later they discovered it, and the director of the museum was notified about it this strange piece with the gears, and he contacted some scholars. And they came and they said it was uh, an astrolab, which was an ancient piece of machinery that was used uh, to calculate the cosmos. Ultimately, uh, it proved that it was not an astrolab. And there was a man by the name of Albert Rim, this is a photograph by Rim, who, who determined that it was actually a planetarium. And from that, uh, the story really takes off about what exactly is this strange artifact. And uh, a lot of scholars went and looked uh, into that question. And that's what a big part of this exhibit is about. So the, the mechanism that determined Albert Rim, who was the German scholar who photographed it in 1905, uh, and we had looked at the image a little while ago, they determined that it was, the mechanism was a planetarium, and, and Rim's work was discovered by this man. And his name was Derek Solar Price, and he uh, was a British uh, science historian who was at Yale University in the 1950s. And based on what he had gotten from Albert Rim, he made the first x-rays of the mechanism, and that is being able to go and look inside to see the gears that were frozen inside fragments. Uh, from, that, from that work and from those x-rays, he produced a, a paper called 
gears from the Greeks, the Antikythera mechanism. And uh, De Silva Price is actually the man who named the piece uh, the Antikythera mechanism. Uh, he d determined based on uh, his x-rays that how the gears fit together. And in this, this uh, landmark study in 1974, uh, he published his, his findings and they diagrammed uh, how they believed that the teeth uh, in the mechanism were the numbers were what was making it a calculator. And as you may know, uh, the Antikythera mechanism is considered one of the world's first analog computers. Um, it's an amazing thing that they were able to, to make these gears uh, to basically chart the planets uh, in 150 BCE. That's, that's pretty amazing stuff. Uh, and so uh, from Price, uh, scholars began working again to try to unravel the mystery of what exactly the mechanism was and what it did. Uh, and that story is going to continue on. It's going to go on through. Uh, even, even Jacques Cousteau comes out in the 70s. And you may remember Jacques Cousteau, uh, the French oceanographer. Uh, he, they went to the wreck site in 1976 and, and discovered more artifacts, including uh, coins from the city of Pergamon, which is a Greek city in Asia Minor, which gave some clues to the origins of the treasure ship that had sank uh, in 60 BCE, and also some clues maybe to the origins of the mechanism itself. Uh, this man uh, based his studies on Sola Price. His name was Michael Wright. He was a curator at the Science Museum uh, in London, and he, from Price's work, uh, Michael Wright was inspired to study the pieces again and went to Athens and studied them and x-rayed them yet again. Uh, and he basically improved some improved x-rays. And from all of that, Wright was able to uh, build what he believed was a working model of the calculator uh, at, that he believed it was. And, uh, from Wright, it goes on uh, into the 2000s, and in the 2000s there was a group called the Antikythera Mechanism Research Project, and they used digital scanning to, to look in the insides of the mechanism. That's what is going on in this footage right here. Ultimately, from these, uh, it was a whole international team of scholars uh, working on this, and from this, they discovered writing inside the fragments. And in fact, it was in Greek, um, and from this writing, scholars were able to determine that it was essentially the instructions on how to use the machine. Uh, one of the members of the Antikythera Mechanism Research Project was a ma man by the name of Xenophon Musas, and he is a professor of astrophysics uh, at the uh, University of Athens. And he was instrumental in helping us to uh, put this e exhibit together, uh, especially in terms of information and images. And this uh, case right here, and this is, this is Dr. Musas right here, uh, this case has a replica that was built uh, that Dr. Moosus gave to the museum so that you can actually see, get an idea of the scale and what the dials look like and also especially what the gears on the inside look like. And that's, like I said, there's Dr. Moosus with uh, one of the replicas of that. We were very pleased to be able to show that. Uh, ultimately, the, the story moves on in, in 2012. Uh, there was an international group of uh, marine archaeologists that went back to the shipwreck site and they mapped the seafloor all the way around the entire island. They actually found some other shipwrecks there. Uh, they found more uh, artifacts uh, from the Antikythera mechanism site, from the original 1900 site. Uh, the one thing they didn't find, disappointingly, was they did not find another mechanism and they did not find any additional pieces to the mechanism. So uh, they've been diving, they dived all, all the way until 2020. They did not dive in 2020 because of COVID, but I believe they are probably going back, will be uh, resuming uh, the dives of the area this year. You can see some of the things they found that it had not been discovered by the original sponge divers or Jacques Cousteau and his crew. 
Uh, so there's more, there was definitely more artifacts on the seafloor there, and they continue to search for them. This uh, video was made by National Geographic, and it was, it's a really wonderful uh, overview of what they've been working on. I think they made it in 2017. So I thought that this was probably the end of the story, and I was pulling everything together last March, March of this year, when suddenly there was a new article came out on March 12, 2021, and it was published in Scientific Reports, which is a title, uh, subtitle of Nature, and it was by a new group of scholars. Uh, many of them uh, had been part of the Antikythera Mechanism Research Project in the 2000s, uh, and from their additional new information, what they wanted to do in March of this year is they wanted to say, we think we've solved the mystery, and we believe that the mechanism is a planetarium. Uh, we believe that the gears were created to do the math to help determine where the planets were located, also determine and predict when eclipses are happening, uh, even predicting when the Olympic Games would happen in different parts of Greece. It's not really anything super groundbreaking, but what I, they wanted to say with this new report is that basically we think we've almost solved the mystery. And that brings us to the end of the story. It's a great story of all sorts of strange things, shipwrecks and deep sea divers and ancient art and scholarship and deciphering and uncovering a mystery, uh, diving for treasure, uh, mapping the seafloor, and then ultimately the trying to basically figure out exactly what the mechanism was. It, it is a monumental artifact in terms of its uh, origin, being one of the original, and the world's first analog computer, the word, the, in the being able to use gears in an analog way to do complicated uh, calculations. And being created in 150 BCE, there's really nothing else like it. So uh, I wish we could have shown the original, but we, uh, we haven't been able to do that because uh, it doesn't ever leave the uh, National Museum of Archaeology in, in Athens. One thing we did do is uh, Katie Petrolia, our education director, had some 3D replicas made of what the ancient fragment A of the, of the mechanism would have looked like. And it, it look, appears like as if it is on the seafloor, just like as if you had just found it. Um, and uh, it really helps people understand, I think, that it, it is truly an object and that it is truly more than just a sort of a blob. It, it actually is, you can tell that it is an actual piece of machinery. So. There was that, um, it's, like I said, this has been a real labor of love and I'm glad it's come together and I invite you to come and see it uh, here at the Parthenon. It'll be in the West Gallery here at the Parthenon through September 26th, the Antikythera Mechanism.